Hi everyone, good morning and thank you for joining us today for Webinar Wednesdays with Senior Medicare Patrol. Our July hot topic has been on durable medical equipment or DME fraud, so we're going to be discussing that today. My name is Sunny Lawless and I am the volunteer coordinator for our SMP programs and I'll be your host this morning. Our presenters are Nathan Coughlin and Shay Lewis, who are both community outreach specialists for our Georgia SMP program. We will be taking questions at the end of the presentation today. And there's also going to be a prize drawing at the end for those of you who were registered for the webinar prior to 10.15 a.m. this morning. And the winner must be present to win. Before we get started, I do have to let you know that this project was supported by a grant from the U.S. Administration for Community Living, Department of Health and Human Services in Washington. Grantees undertaking projects under government sponsorship are encouraged to express freely their findings and conclusions. Points of view or opinions do not therefore necessarily represent official administration for community living policy. So who is Senior Medicare Patrol? Well, SMPs are grant funded by the Administration for Community Living. Every state has an SMP program. In Georgia, Louisiana, and Mississippi, SMP is sponsored by AdviseWell. And our mission is to empower and assist Medicare beneficiaries, their families and caregivers to prevent, detect, and report healthcare fraud, errors, and abuse. And we do that through outreach, counseling, and education. So did you know that billions of taxpayer dollars are lost to Medicare and Medicaid every single year? We see estimates from 60 to $90 billion lost annually to fraud, waste, and abuse. But since it's so hard to measure, we know that the numbers are much higher. Medicare fraud affects everyone because taxpayer dollars are used to fund the Medicare program. Fraud effects include the loss of benefits for the beneficiary. You'll pay higher premiums. You could become a victim of identity theft. And of course, the billions of dollars that the program loses. And that's billions with a B. All right, so before we get started with today's presentation, we did just want to do a quick poll. So let me launch that poll. And you'll see it on your screen here. Have you ever received phone calls from someone offering you a free back brace or knee brace? And we'll give you just a few seconds to answer yes or no. Looks like 90% of you have voted. Just a few more seconds and we'll wrap it up. Okay. So let's look at the results. So it looks like 44% of you said yes and 56% of you said no, letting us know that you have not received a phone call from someone offering you a free back brace or knee brace. So thank you so much for completing the poll. That's great information that we just learned. And from the responses of the poll, we're going to dive a little deeper into this with information on today's main topic. So of course, we're going to talk about durable medical equipment or DME fraud and scams. Nathan is going to share with you information on um, this very important topic. Nathan? Hello, everyone. So uh, let's first talk about DME. DME, as you know, stands for Durable Medical Equipment. DME is medical equipment and supplies described to you by your doctor that is reusable and has a usable shelf life of at least three years. It's usually equipment mainly used in the home for a medical reason of some sort. Examples of this type of equipment are back and knee braces, walkers, wheelchairs, hospital beds, home oxygen equipment, diabetic supplies, therapeutic shoes, and scooters, amongst other things. To qualify for DME, you will need a prescription from your doctor. 
So if you need the durable medical equipment, you and your doctor can make that decision. They know your health needs and can prescribe DME when it's medically necessary. Some equipment must be sized so it will work best for you and fit into your home. Medicare only covers DME if you get it from a supplier that is enrolled in the Medicare program. Next slide, Sonny. Now that you know what DME is, let's talk about DME fraud and scams. This type of fraud and scams have been on the rise for many years. Many people are getting calls from suppliers offering free, I put free in quotes, medical equipment, or they are getting supplies in the mail without having ordered any supplies or equipment. Some examples of DME fraud include billing for, billing for equipment that you never received, you provide your Medicare number to the DME provider and they bill Medicare for the items and you never receive anything. Billing for equipment different from what you received. The provider offers to send you one thing, they bill Medicare for it, and you receive something totally different. Often the provider will send multiple braces for different uses. Billing for equipment you don't even need is a big one. And also giving false or misleading information, such as offering free, again, I put free in quotes, equipment when they are going to bill Medicare. The provider tells you the equipment is free. However, they bill Medicare anyway. The takeaway is if something is truly free, you do not need to provide your insurance information. Next slide. Some potential DME scams that have led to fraud are getting calls or visits from people saying they represent Medicare and are trying to sell you products. Many television and radio ads run targeting beneficiaries to get them to order free DME. These ads don't have the beneficiary's best interest at heart, so don't fall for the advertising of free equipment. Aggressive marketing by durable medical equipment suppliers. Don't let anyone persuade you or pressure you into switching suppliers. Talk to your supplier first because you may not need to make the change. Seniors across the United States are receiving calls from people offering them free back braces and knee braces. They ask for the senior's Medicare number, date of birth, and other personal information. In some cases, the senior never even receives the equipment, but Medicare is billed anyway. Sometimes the senior receives the equipment, but it doesn't fit properly, so they are unable to use it and have trouble returning to the provider. So Medicare ends up paying for equipment they are unable to use. The key takeaway I would bring up here would be really talking to your doctor about these medical needs and not someone over the phone. This graphic, <clears throat> this graphic you see on your screen, produced by the Office of the Inspector General, shows you an example of how the scams usually work. It starts with conspirators. They own the call centers where telemarketers call beneficiaries directly and offer free or low cost braces. The call centers confirm that beneficiaries are on Medicare and then transfer them to a telemedicine firm for a doctor's consultation. The doctor and the telemedicine company prescribe an orthotic brace regardless of medical necessity. They didn't, they, excuse me, they then turn around and submit the brace prescription to the call center. The call center collects the prescriptions and sells them to a medical equipment company. After the medical equipment company buys the prescriptions, the medical equipment company sends the brace or multiple braces to the beneficiary. The company bills Medicare and pays a kickback to the conspirators. Then the cycle starts all over again. Next slide. Wheelchair scams. Wheelchair scams are another very common type of durable medical equipment fraud. Mechanical and motorized wheelchairs can assist a beneficiary who has a chronic ailment or disability that prevents them from freely ambulating. The power wheelchair industry has grown into an almost billion dollar per year industry. You've probably seen commercials on TV offering wheelchairs at little to no cost to you. Be aware. The Medicare rules stipulate that you must have legitimate need before obtaining these devices, and a certificate of medical necessity must be signed by your doctor. 
how this particular scam works is DME street scammers may approach you to offer a power wheelchair that is a free benefit for having Medicare. This is not the case. The beneficiary must have a legitimate need. Co-pays and deductibles may have to be met, and the physician prescribing the device must have examined the patient. The cost of these power devices runs from $1,500 all the way to $6,000, depending upon the model. In addition, accessories may be ordered that are not needed, driving the cost up even higher by several thousand dollars. Often a scam artist will contact the beneficiary and use scare tactics. This includes telling the beneficiary that Medicare is running out of money, so the beneficiary better get his wheelchair now, even though it is not needed at this time. Getting equipment now for possible future needs does not adhere to Medicare rules and is therefore illegal. How to fight back against these scams. Do not let anyone talk you into stockpiling equipment for later use. If you do not need the equipment, it should only be ordered through your regular family physician. If someone calls and tries to threaten or pressure you into something, simply, I apologize early, if you do need the equipment, it should only be ordered through your regular family physician. If someone calls and tries to threaten or pressure you into something, simply hang up your phone. Be aware that you're responsible for 20% of the final amount including potentially unnecessary add-ons and accessories for the device ordered. Frequently, the scammers do not explain this. Next slide. We're doing another poll time. Yes, this okay. Poll question. Take a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. So how do you think you could help stop Medicare fraud is our next poll. So give me just one second. We'll go ahead and launch that. And your options are protect my personal information, treat my Medicare card like I would my credit card, refuse and report anyone offering free, in quotes, DME, or all of the above. So I'll give everyone just a few seconds to vote and then we will share the results. All right, it looks like we've got the majority of the votes. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and share the results. And that's great, 100% say all of the above. And that's the correct answer is all of the above. All of these responses are ways that you can help stop durable medical equipment fraud. And next we're gonna go over this in just a little bit more detail. All right, Nathan. So now that you've heard all about durable medical equipment fraud, we want to empower you with some things you can do to stop that durable medical equipment fraud. Here's a few tips to bring uh, on things you can do to stop the fraud. The best way to avoid becoming a victim of DME fraud and scams is to protect your personal information. You should never give out your Medicare number to a stranger and person or over the phone. You should treat your Medicare number as closely uh, as you would your credit card number. Refuse and report anyone offering free equipment, supplies, or services in exchange for your Medicare number. If you do not, if you do make a mistake giving out your information, review your Medicare summary notice or ELB. That is the best way to make sure that no one is using your Medicare number to commit fraud. If you were on original Medicare, the red, white, and blue card, you should receive an MSN, also known as a Medicare Summary Notice, once each quarter. If you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, you should receive an EOB or Explanation of Benefits after you receive healthcare services. If you see any suspicious items on your MSN or EOB, you must report it. It is very important that you care about what is going on with your Medicare benefits. If Medicare pays for equipment that you, that you never ordered or never received, when you need the equipment, Medicare will deny it because it will show that you've already received it. To avoid becoming a victim of DME fraud, you should follow Senior Medicare Patrol's message, which is to protect, detect, and report. Next slide. So now that we've gone over DME fraud, Shay is going to share the three keys to success in preventing healthcare fraud waste and abuse. Shay? All right, hello everyone. 
Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. The first key is to protect. Protect, protect, protect. Please remember that message, you all. Protecting your personal information is your best defense against healthcare fraud and abuse. Some tips to remember when protecting yourself against Medicare fraud are treat your Medicare and your social security numbers like your credit cards. Remember, never give these numbers to a stranger. Remember, Medicare won't call you to ask for your Medicare number. I'm gonna repeat that again, because that's a very big one that we encounter. Medicare won't call you for your Medicare number. Second one, I'm sorry, third one, don't carry your Medicare card unless you need it for a doctor's appointment and also keep a record of your medical visits, tests and procedures in a healthcare journal or a calendar. Next slide. The second key is detect. Knowing how to spot suspicious activity can help you stop healthcare fraud and abuse in its tracks. Some tips to remember when detecting potential fraud, errors, and abuse are reviewing your Medicare summary notice or your MSNs or your explanation of benefits, EOBs, from your insurance company. Your Medicare, your Medicare summary notice is mailed to you by Medicare every three months. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you will receive an explanation of benefits or EOB after you receive your health care services. And also compare your statements to your personal records and look for the following items, which are charges for something that you didn't get, billing for the same services or supplies twice, and services that weren't ordered by your doctor. Next slide. The third and final key is report. If you suspect you have been a target of fraud, please report it. This will help you and others at risk for healthcare scams. Some tips to report suspicious behavior. If you receive a suspicious phone call, do not give out any personal information. Please, re please call immediately to SMP. If you have any questions about your Medicare statement, you can also call your healthcare provider or plan. And if you just aren't comfortable calling your provider or you just aren't satisfied with their response, please call SMP. We are always here to help. Next slide. So you may be wondering how you can help and become involved. Well, SMP is always looking for civic minded individuals to join our fight against Medicare fraud. Our volunteers receive training on the basis of Medicare and healthcare errors, fraud, abuse, and scams. In addition to giving presentations and attending community events, our volunteers participate in bi monthly webinars and various training opportunities throughout the year. We also host a volunteer appreciation event in the month of April for National Volunteer Week. If you think volunteering for SP is something you might be interested in, give us a call at our toll free number at 877 272 8720. We'll be more than happy to send you one of our volunteer information packets and answer any questions you might have about the process. Next slide. Now, as we mentioned in the previous slides, again, we have a toll-free number at 877-272-8720. You can also visit our website, www.stopmedicarefraud.org for any additional information about our program. Also, we will also encourage you to like our Facebook pages as well. So we have one in the state of Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, and also for our Spanish population. Next slide. All right, thank you, Nathan and Shay, for that information on durable medical equipment and fraud and scams. Some great information to share. And, and as Shay mentioned, just always, Medicare will never call you um, on the phone and ask you for any personal information. That's just a very big, big tip to remember. So we'd like for you to save the date for our next webinar Wednesday's event. On Wednesday, August 31st at 10.30 a.m., we're going to meet again to share information on pharmacy and prescription drug fraud. So we hope you'll be able to join us then. Just be, out, be on the lookout for an invitation to register for that soon. So before we wrap up today um, and open the floor to questions, we are going to go ahead and have our prize drawing. Everyone who um, registered to join us before 10.15 a.m. this morning has been entered 
onto our little prize wheel and you must be present to join. So um, we'll go ahead and spin the wheel and hopefully the winner is here. All right, so Miss Nita, and I do believe I saw her name here. Yes, ma'am. All right, Miss Nita Ford, you are our prize winner today. So I will be reaching out to you a little bit later to get your information so we can get you that prize. Let's see, get back to the slides. There we go. All right. So before we wrap up today's presentation, I did just kind of want to open the floor to questions. If you have a question about any of the information we presented today, um, on the right hand side of your screen, you should see the control panel and there's a hand icon. You can raise that if you click on it and we'll unmute your line and you can ask your question. Or if you'd prefer, you can send us a question through the chat. And we'll just give y'all a couple minutes just to see if we have any hands raised with any questions. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any hands raised or any information coming through the chat. I did um, put in the chat a short survey or a link to a short survey. So we would really appreciate it if you would take the opportunity to complete this and let the Administration for Com Community Living know how we did with today's presentation. I'll also include it in a follow-up email um, later today. So you'll have the option to, to do it then if you like. All right, well, this will conclude our presentation on durable medical equipment. We really appreciate you joining us this morning and we hope that you will join us again next month for our presentation on pharmacy and prescription drug fraud. So thank you again. Thank you to our presenters, Nathan and Shay, and we hope you have a good day.